Hi guys, my name is Juan Castillo. Welcome to the vlog. Um, first of all, I apologize for the echo in here right now. I, yeah, it's a bit echoey in this room and I don't entirely know how to go about fixing that. So for now, I apologize. But I wanted to do this quick video because as you guys have noticed, I really haven't posted anything in a while. Um, and there's a reason for that. My mom passed away a few weeks ago. And as you can probably imagine, that's a uh, that was a difficult experience for me and I needed to take a break away from doing pretty much anything um, so I wanted to let you guys know that that was the situation I'm not leaving YouTube I'm not leaving making videos I just needed to take a quick break to deal with my mom's passing with that said I do want to thank everybody that were supportive of me during that time. You guys know who you are. I have rarely felt so much love uh, as I did in those days. And it was crucial for me to really deal with that, um, with that event during those moments. I mean, I've had friends that have cleaned my house. I had a friend that literally went all the way to New York to be with me uh, during that funeral an outpouring of messages on, on social media and, and, and texts and emails. I just thank you. Uh, every little bit helped. And, um, you know, I was able to really deal with the emotions because of you guys. But now I'm back. Things are starting to look normal again. I'm still kind of grieving. You know, there's those moments that you go through where... You think you're absolutely fine and then something seems to switch and all of a sudden you're an emotional mess. It's exhausting. <laughs> but I think that I have been consistently doing better and uh, my mind is starting to feel not as exhausted because for me anyways, like grief is different. So far I've lost two of my best friends, one of my grandmothers and now my mother. And... Grief for every single one of those people has been different. It's just, it's just looked different. Um, and it's, it felt different somehow. So in my mom's case, she was sick before she died. So um, she was critically sick. She was in a coma. There's not much that I could have, like we didn't communicate but I got to at least say my goodbyes before she actually left. And I got to do a lot of my deep emotional outpouring while she was sick. So that when she was gone, I guess it was a bit easier. Um, for me, it was more of a, she's no longer suffering. And that helped a lot. But I say that because one of the th lessons I feel that I'm learning, especially with dealing with people that are going through very tough times, emotionally tough times, is the, the impact of what we would consider little actions. For example, a lot of people on my Facebook page said things like, we're praying for you, we're sending you our thoughts, um, sending you hugs, or, you know, in essence, acknowledging the fact that I was going through a difficult time and acknowledging the fact that their thoughts, their prayers were with me. Now, some people may see a simple Facebook post as flippant or as, I don't know, like it's nothing big or it's nothing major. Uh, but for me, there were several times when I was going through a very deep and very emotional period that I would uh, just look through the Facebook feed and, and see all the thoughts and all the comments from people and that would make me feel better. Everybody's different. I'm not saying that that works for everybody, but I'm saying that to me, that was therapeutic. I think in many ways, what's gonna happen now is difficult because certain things throughout the day remind me of mom. Uh, like if I, if I went two weeks without calling her, she would call me and she was like, why haven't you called me? Have you forgotten about me? Don't forget about me. <laughs> and those are things now that I'm going to miss. Um, before, if, I, if I'm honest, it was a bit annoying because I was like, mom, I'm working, I'm busy. 
but it's funny how something like that is now something that causes you emotional, you know, emotional distress. I understand that for me, the grieving process is not over. Yes, I am to a point where I can laugh with my friends and I can joke about certain things and, and I can move around and I can and I may seem fine. And I'm fine, really, but I also have to be forgiven of myself if I do find certain moments particularly sad. In many ways, I think that we grow up to think that we have to be strong, right? That crying or or dwelling on a grievance is a sign of weakness or is a sign of immaturity or is a sign of whatever. Somebody can legitimately say to you, dude, it's time to get over it. You know, your mom died a month ago or whatever. You know, it's time to move on. It's time to start working again. It's time for you to, to or whatever. This is not an excuse for this. Whatever. We internalize that. For somebody who strives to be positive and who strives to look at things uh, in a productive way, grief can be quite the shock. The fact that my brain has difficulty right now thinking about complex things, it's quite a shock because I like to be productive. I like to be, you know, I like to be in the moment. I like to be here. My mind doesn't always cooperate with me right now. And, and that's difficult. That's, um, What's the word? <clears throat> you know, moments when you can't even think about a single word. That messes with your confidence. And that's just the bottom line about that. I think if I had any advice for people, like friends of people that are going through grief, this would be my advice. A, don't think that your actions are small. In fact, if you think you have to give somebody a sermon about what they're going through, Right there, you're, you're missing the point. A small action, admitting and acknowledging the fact that somebody's going through pain is huge. Because in many ways, for me anyways, I felt like I didn't want to bother people. And I still don't. When I'm walking in the street and somebody says, hey, how are you doing? I say, I'm fine. Which many times, that has been a blatant lie. There has been so many days recently that I just, I just wanted a... You see? But I just wanted a hug that I can't, I, I, I've, I've, I've lost count. In fact, there's one day where I almost walked up to somebody and I was like, can you just hug me? Just hug me. But I didn't because that would just be weird. But it's the simple things. Don't sweat the simple things. Meaning don't think that you're, hey, I'm here for you. Or you're, hey, I'm thinking about you. Or your random call. I was just thinking about you, just we wanted to make sure that you're okay. Those go a long way. Also, hugs, hugs. At the funeral, the friend that went to visit me was a huge source of comfort. Why? Because there were several times where I could just go in there and just give him a hug. Plain and simple. That's what I needed at that moment. There was no rationalizing about things that were going on. There were, I didn't need any of that. I just needed somebody to be there. Uh, my family were there, we hugged each other. My friend was there, I hugged him. My family talked to my friend. So eventually we, we got to talk about other things about mom and there was even a certain time when, when my mind just raced about why was my mom in this situation and seeing her there was difficult and I just talked about what I was feeling and there was no pushback. There was no, hey, you, you need to start thinking about this. Your mom is, you know, whatever. There wasn't any of that. It was just the ability for me to let out. Um, and that's what I needed at that moment. So, so going back to my question, if I could give an advice to friends that have friends that are going to, through grief, um, I would say just let them be. Uh, meaning, be there. Don't feel like you have to fix the problem because you can't. You can't fix death. And there's really nothing you can say to make that situation go away. All you can do is say to that person, I am here and you can cry on my shoulder or I'm going to grieve with you. I can't grieve the same way you can grieve, obviously, because, you know, she's not my mother, but I can at least be here. And if you need to grieve, it's okay. If snot is coming out of your nose, it's okay. If you need a snot on my shirt, do it. If you need somebody to hug you, here I am. 
I don't need to explain to you why this happened or whatever. All I need to do is just be here for you. And that's huge. That is huge. Another thing, <clears throat> the other advice, like service. Look, when I came back from New York, I was not in the mood or in the right frame of mind to do anything. I was depressed and that was difficult for me to acknowledge as well, but I was depressed. When I came, one of the thoughts that scared me the most was coming home and having to do things like dishes and, and clean the house or whatever. So it was a huge shock to me when I came home and I found my home spotless clean with did like food for like a week done, prepared, and in the fridge. My friends take care of my dog, so they have the key to my house. Um, <clears throat> so when they took it upon themselves to like clean my house and, and make sure my dog was there when I arrived, and they, they did this casserole for me, which was delicious, um, and they placed it there with a note that says, you have, you know, we, we prepared this for you, you have food for a week. When I got home, when I got when I got home and I saw that I could I couldn't hold it. I just started crying because that was that was what I needed. Sorry. They didn't have to fix my mom's problem. They didn't have to what they did was perfect. And um and that blessed me. So advice, think about that. Think about the little things. What can you take away from somebody's plate who is grieving? Can you clean their house? Do it. If they allow you to come into their house. And if they don't, that's okay too. They're grieving. If they don't want to spend time with you, don't take it personally. They're grieving. Sometimes I didn't, like for example, uh, I purposely like stayed home afterwards and I didn't like call friends or something like that because there was just a moment where I didn't want to be around people. I had been around people for two weeks while I was in New York and while I was going through the funeral and, and with families. And I, I loved that time. But when I came home, there was a point where I'm like, I didn't even want to, like, I didn't even want to answer my phone. And I needed that. So I guess the other advice that I will have for you, if you have a friend that is grieving, let them disconnect. But don't entirely let them disconnect. Like after a few days, send them a text and be like, hey, just want to make sure that you're okay, thinking about you. Let them know that you're there, but let them know that you don't require an increased amount of time from them because it's exhausting. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm i very grateful that I have friends that recognize this about me. Um, they know already that I'm an introvert and they know already that I require a lot of me time. <laughs> that sounds really selfish. Long story short, I wanted you guys to just know that that's the situation that happened. I'm not leaving YouTube I just needed to take a little bit of time away while I dealt with my mom's death. And uh, yeah, but I'm here. So I should be posting videos going forward. So thank you guys for sticking around. Uh, thank you guys for being patient with me. I know that I haven't been consistently posting videos. I want to, I was starting to, and then stuff happened. I'm just like, no, but, um, but thank you. And uh, with that, I'll see you guys next time. Next time. Next time. I'll see you next time. <laughs> no, I'll see you next time.